Mark Nickel is Newcastle's most belligerent car journalist. For more than one year, he's been dishing out some of the sharpest put-downs in the business. Volkswagen up, Volkswagen doing more like. His car knowledge is the stuff of legend. Is this a petrol or a diesel? Now he's on the hunt for a premium crossover. Right, this week I need a car that's small on the outside, but that's big on the inside. The looks the part, but it's good value for my money, and most importantly, isn't a loan of old tut. Four candidates. No, hang on, there's a fifth one. Yep, there's a good chance you have paid zero attention to Infinity, but that's because it only came to the UK in 2009, and it did so with a range of big 4x4s, posh convertibles, and executive saloons with massive petrol engines. Yeah, right in time for the recession. Imagine rocking up to a church jumble sale with a load of Richard Dawkins books and trying to flog them for 50 quid a pop. Needless to say, Infinity dealerships for the first few years produced an awful lot of very good solitaire and Angry Birds players. Funny enough, it's been a struggle. Even if you look at the recent past, the numbers aren't great. So 2013, Infinity sold that many cars in the UK. 2014, that many. 2015, that many. Now, Infinity would tell you the numbers are going upwards. But if you put it in the context of two and a half million cars sold per year, roughly on average, numbers are terrible. I mean, if this was a business plan on a business program, I can't think of an example right now, they'd call it unsustainable. And so Infinity has turned to a saviour in the form of this, the Mercedes-Benz A-Class, which Infinity has used to underpin two new cars, the Q30 hatchback. And this, the slightly taller, slightly fatter version, the QX30. It's a crossover. Now, on the one hand, it might seem normal to use a Mercedes-Benz, but consider this. Infinity is owned by Nissan, and the QX30 is roughly Nissan Qashqai sized. And the QX30 is built in Sunderland, right next to the Qashqai. That's the cash car that's selling at a rate of about 5,000 a month at the moment. Hmm. Maybe Infinity's just trying to protect itself from stuff like... It's just a tarted up Nissan. So it's used a more obviously premium starting point for its premium crossover. However, it doesn't really feel like they've gone that far beyond the starting point. So some of it's different. This is all different and the nav's different, but let's not get bogged down in that whole multimedia hornet's nest. I hate these things. But if you look at this, key, exactly the same as an A-Class. All this steering wheel switch gear, exactly the same. That display between the speedometer and the rev counter, the same as an A-Class, same graphics. All this, the same, all this, the same. I mean, it really makes you feel like... Well, it's just a tarted up Mercedes. Let's forget about all that and concentrate on the stuff that crossovers are good at, like space. Right, I haven't just done this for effect. This seat is actually further forward from my normal driving position. Oh well, at least crossovers have big boots, eh? That is what 430 litres of space looks like. Okay, so it's not as big as a Mercedes JLA's boot space, or as big as a BMW X1's boot space. But look, you can fit a vacuum into it. Sort of. You can fit a vacuum into it. You can nearly fit a vacuum into it. Anyway, not to worry, because the driving experience is absolutely excrement. Just kidding. Actually, it's not bad, but it's not great. It's kind of like in trying to make it feel solid, Infinity's sort of forgotten that an SUV type car is meant to be comfortable first and foremost. So, like especially at low speeds, the steering feels quite heavy, the suspension feels a bit too firm. That means it doesn't feel woolly like some SUVs do, but also it's not really as fun to drive as an Audi Q3 or a BMW X1. And there's a couple of inches down here that's definitely worth mentioning. Yep, the accelerator is strangely at odds with the character of the rest of the car. When you're in normal mode, and obviously there's a sports mode in this car, it's like the first 80% of travel in the accelerator doesn't do anything, so you have to really put your foot down to get it going. And when you do that, you're gonna have to put up with this, the four cylinder diesel engine that Infinity has nicked from, funny enough, Mercedes. Unfortunately, Infinity forgot to nick any soundproofing material along with it. 
It says here this has got something called active noise cancellation. Must be switched off. And because the engine's quite old now, and you can only get the QX30 with an automatic gearbox and four-wheel drive, the MPGs aren't very good either. Compare these stats with these stats. Hmm, huh. that's actually pretty good when you look at it that way. However, while there's loads of choice with an Audi Q3, a BMW X1, or a Mercedes-Benz GLA for that matter, meaning you can buy cheaper and more efficient versions, that's not the case here. This is your sole drivetrain choice, and there are only two trim levels, meaning you pay either 30 grand or 33 grand before options. Now this particular car is top end premium tech spec, and it has a couple of extra features like blind spot warning and automatic parking and funny colored leather. Now what that does is it takes the price up to over 37 grand. Funnily enough, for that money, you can buy a new Qashqai and a new A-Class. In other words, a new Nissan and a new Mercedes for the same price as this Nissan Mercedes. So the key question is, is 37 grand or even 33 grand what you have to pay to get a decent QX30? And the answer is no. Now obviously I can't read through the spec sheet because I'm driving, but it's enough to say that your basic 30 grand QX30 has all the trinkets that you could possibly need. It's got Bluetooth, it's got nav, it's got climate control, it's got heated seats and it's got big wheels. No problem. And what this also has, very importantly, are its looks. You might think it's a horror show, all these shapes and bulbous bits and what have you. It's like someone turned a BMW X1 inside out in places, but you cannot say it's bland. And with so many crossovers kicking about today, that matters quite a lot. And remember, a few minutes ago when we said 2013 Infinity sold that many cars in the UK, 2014 that many, 2015 that many. Well, both this car and the Q30 came out this year, basically, and as of now, October 2016, what do you know, Infinity has already sold more cars in the UK than it did in the whole of 2013 to 2015 combined. What does that tell you? That looks matter? Maybe just that having the right business plan, making the right sort of car, actually works? That was the worst bloody review I've ever seen. You're fired. And there's a couple of inches down here that's definitely worth mentioning. <laughs> <laughs> I 